just three sections on this next test, so it'll go really fast. We'll get it in before the end of the semester. Um, and 2.6 is all about sketching what we call rational, any, or rational, um, rational agreement. We have already spent some time with things like this, actually. And back when we did it, we talked about all of the important information. See if this sounds familiar to you. Vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and holes. And I had you actually sketch the asymptotes, but now we're gonna actually sketch the whole curve. So we're going to sketch this thing, and the information that we're going to include are the vertical asymptotes, the horizontal asymptotes, the holes, the y-intercept, and the x-intercept. If we can figure all of those things out, we ought to be able to sketch this thing. anyone remember anything about vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, holes? Or you must have just had a terrible teacher. This problem has no holes because the only way to get holes is to somehow be able to cancel within your problem. Holes happen when you cancel. Now this is a really easy example, it's a basic problem, nothing factors and cancels, so we're not going to have any holes. As we progress through our notes, we'll be getting harder and harder and we'll have some that have holes. This one doesn't have any. Again, the only way to get a hole is if you have a, a situation where maybe you have factored the problem and you can cancel. That's how you get holes, it's the only way. Vertical asymptotes are cannot be's. When you look at this equation, x can be anything in the whole wide world except, no, x can be two. There's nothing wrong with two. Two would be fine. I could put two in and I would get four over negative one. That would be good. What can x absolutely not be? Oh my goodness, three. What happens if you let x be three? You get a zero in the denominator. That is not good. So your vertical asymptote is where x equals three. So I'm gonna come over to my graph and I'm gonna put a vertical asymptote at x equals three. And if I'm taking notes, which I hope you all are, what are you writing over here? How are you gonna remind yourself by the next time we have class, how to find vertical asymptotes. Yeah, whatever makes the denominator zero. Whatever makes the denominator zero. Now the horizontal asymptotes, this one is at y equals one. You remember that little trick we did where we compared the x's on the top with the x's on the bottom? And in this case, it's 1x over 1x, so that's just <coughs> 1. So I have a horizontal asymptote at 1. Again, I hope you're making a little note so that you remember how you did that. We compare the x's in the problem. Now, intercepts are easy. You've known about intercepts your whole life. If we're talking about an x-intercept, aren't we talking about a point on the x-axis? And what do we know about any point on the x-axis? I don't know what x is, but I know y is zero. So to get my x-intercept, I am going to let y be <coughs> zero. So go back to your equation. I just made that up, I don't know where it is yet. Go back to your equation and let y be zero. So if y is zero, 
I have to solve this equation. What do I always do with my denominators? Multiply, bring them over, right? But since that's a zero, it won't even matter, will it? So where's my x-intercept? At negative two. So my x-intercept is at negative two. It will always be the case that your x-intercept is going to come from the numerator because the denominator is always going to cancel out with that zero. So your x-intercept is always going to come from the numerator. How do we find a y-intercept? Well, you let x be zero. Sure, if you're on the y-axis, isn't your x going to be zero? So now I'll plug zero into my equation, and what do I get if I put in zero? Negative two-thirds. This is everything that's important. Now you've got to draw the picture. Go back to your BFFs. Oh my gosh, you thought you could forget those. You can't. You have a BFF that's a fraction. It's a very simple one. It's this one, right, called the reciprocal function. What does that look like? Yep, Tyler, I saw your hands moving. It looks like this, right? And aren't these your asymptotes? Right? So this is just a fancier version of that. So I'm going to connect these dots right here, and if I connect them, I can see that shape, right? Do you see that shape? What do you think's happening over on that side? Same thing, but up here? Because that's what a reciprocal function looks like. The only difference is because you put these numbers in, it shifted things around. But it is exactly the same. All right, so we got one down. Um, I want to remind you, I don't 